Mm. Let's get to the neighbors real quick because I I, I, I am a, a fan of both of these actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Michael from Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, Michael Cutlets, yeah. Michael Cutlets. And Tim Heidecker from yeah. uh, the Tim and Eric show is yeah. what I know him the most yeah, for. Yeah. Um, and I think he's, that, that show's absolutely brilliant. I think you and I talked on the phone about, about Tim, Tim before. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you get these two we, to be well, the, to be we the love, neighbors? We're like come from? such big fans of Tim. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, since college, like from like Tom Goes to the Mayor, even in high school, honestly, Tom Goes to the oh, Mayor, right. that was their first show. And then uh-huh. in a Tarek, uh, Tim and Eric Austin show, which I feel like they just like completely reinvented their own version of like sketch comedy, you know, like everyone, I feel like there's different generations that come and then we'll do like their own version of what that is. And right. so he's like so great. And then we'd seen him in things like the comedy and other um, roles where like, it's always very funny to us. Like he'll play the kind of like, um, when, he get, when he gets mad or like plays that guy. Um, I'm laughing and thinking about it. So we had- Can you impersonate on our, on our, on our, Yes, on yes no, please, not come on. on our, not everyone on our, is familiar on with on our, on our first that film, reaction. we had actually, for the villain, we had talked on our first feature, Happy Hunting, uh, on Amazon. We had, we had talked about- um, <laughs> His plug. Casting him, we were like, that would be awesome. And it, it just didn't happen. And then when we wrote this, we had this role of Steve Danik, he's the neighbor. He's kind of just this kind of like backwoodsy guy, but we didn't want to go super stereotypical. Okay. Um, we wanted to, you know, we were trying to humanize everybody and we're like, well, who would live up there? And then we were like, oh wow, Tim would be awesome for this. We were talking, we are like, all right, let's just reach out. So we had our people reach out to his people um, and actually wanted to do it. And uh, we're very happy. Cause, other, cause you, the, the role, he did a great job. He just played it very real. Um, and in real life, people have a sense of humor, you know? It's like, right, right. it doesn't have to be like some scary guy. We just didn't want, we wanted to make it feel real. So anyway, we love getting him. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they, I, th- I think in a stereotypical world, the, the sort of redneck neighbor character with all the guns would be somehow threatening to the family mm-hmm. or would be you know, this hardcore sort of personality. And the reality is that guy in real life is yeah. probably not that. Our, our sort of concept of that character was always that he's someone who's in equilibrium with his environment up on this mountain. Right. He belongs there. Like he's good. Yeah, they, yeah, they've been yeah. there for three generations. Like he's fine. He's not bothering anybody. Like it's really this family that's yeah. coming in. That's this sort of like invasive species that doesn't make sense on the mountain. Mm-hmm. Right. That's causing all the trouble. Like the mm-hmm. you know the Tim Heidecker character is not not causing any trouble up there. Yeah. Like, I think you just touch upon something that I that I I find very interesting is that um, and maybe you can elaborate on it as, as a writer here and, and with having the ambiguity of, you know, uh, antithesis and protagonist in this movie. Um, there's a lot of the theories and talks that are like people who are perceived as bad. It's not like they went out and like, just were, I'm going to do this cause I'm a bad person. It's, it's just, th- they were because of their perception. This is how they, how they feel is right. And the rest of the world finds it so lo- so wrong that then they're now perceived as those are bad acts. Of course, we're taking out the obvious ones of like murder and, and other things like that. But like, like you're talking about, he's Tim Tim's character up there is very much he's part of the mountain. It's it, this is his world. He even does it kind of comically with the cheers and the beers and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? and it's and it's a really it's a really. I think everyone's probably seen a character like that in their life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and at first you might think of like, is that a stereotypical uh, cabin guy who's like going to be the, the bad guy in the cabin or whatever? He's got he's got a sly look on his face or whatever. But like like you might know over time of meeting different people, it's not. I guess the you can't judge the book by the covers becomes very true in that in the sense of like, if they do something that's that's bad, it's kind of because it's their environment. It's not necessarily because they're in, uh, innately born bad in a, in a lot of mm-hmm. respects, mm-hmm. right? So I feel like that that's kind of where I see these characters like Milo um, and it, more so Milo's character because that's the one where it's like starts to go bad. Everything starts to go bad. But again, he's just trying to do what he thinks is best. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a bad Yeah, I person. mean, he's, he's a fish out of water. So Tim Heidecker's character, we can't, Joe, Joe and I, when we wrote it, we kind of looked at it as Tim, I, Tim Heidecker's character, who is uh, Steve Danik, right? He's that neighbor. He's kind of the bad angel. It's the old cartoon. It's like the bad angel and the good angel. Right. right Michael right. Cutlets is also up there, and he's been up there a while, but he definitely has his shit together. Um, and he's kind of the good angel on the shoulder. So, but this guy ends up getting kind of driven past both of them. Like, like even Steve Dan, Heidecker's character, right. 
would never do what this guy did. This yeah. guy's a fish out of water, like Joe was saying, Steve's third generation. So he's like, no, this is just life. Like, right. I'm not, I'm not popping shots off at cops. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Like, I drank the punch and just yeah. went a little bit further. He went, right. he went further right. because he's kind of, you know, I don't well, know. Well, he's got a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. He yeah. has some Undoubt delusions pain. and illusions. He's dealing with the family. She's going through some mental disorders. He's trying to deal with that. He's so he just kind of jumps the shark. He just goes overboard, yeah. you know. Um, and I kind of think to that point though is, is where uh, uh, someone watching the movie can maybe empathize with that character a lot too, mm -hmm. and be yeah. and, and to that I, point. Well, I think you said that earlier. You, you kind of touched on it. It's like whether or not you've moved up to a mountain or not in this film, you will be able to, you know. Put yourself there. Put yourself in these not this not that specific situation, but how that person felt at that time, right. or that, or my father was like this, or my mother was like this. And I think that's the whole point of you know doing art and doing film is to is to reach out to the you know the audience and show them that there's other people right. or other mm -hmm. stories that are feeling like this, and that it's not just you alone, right? Right. You need know? empathy. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's me, the important yeah, thing. Sorry. I was yeah. saying, we talked about it being a bummer movie, and to me, I, I think of it more as being a hopeful movie. I guess I agree. in the sense that. It's showing society as a bunch of decent people mm -hmm. who just want different things. And sometimes those things are mutually exclusive. And that's where the movie has a lot of conflict in it. Right. But it all just comes from the fact that a bunch of good people wanted different things. Yes. And that they couldn't make it work. And, and that, that, that goes back to, I think I was a little you know, long-winded yeah. in what I, was, what I was saying there. But I think that goes back to that <laughs> comparison in real life, though, too. Like that, that's, that's a very real thing. Mm -hmm. If you really look around at society and other people... You often look at them and you see the perception of what they've done and you judge it mm -hmm. when in all reality, they never thought what they were doing was wrong. They always just, it was just a, an idea of what's best for right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, everyone's it's so tribal now with everything, and, mm -hmm. but I think most people are just trying to do what they think is right. And I think that's sort of what, if anything, there's sort of that is the underlying message in the movie for everyone's them, trying you know. to do what's right but everyone's telling them it's wrong right it just doesn't you know <laughs> weird world right the yeah. intentions are there yeah. but it doesn't you know it's 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 how do you deal with that conflict when two people want different things maybe for the right reasons but yeah but it, you can't yeah you can't give way for another person what's well, going back of, uh, of people moving everywhere right yeah and mm -hmm. also you know you move to a new place people are set in their ways and y you're new and you maybe can do things you have a new perspective that you can add and it could be a good thing but people think you're you're going to ruin you know you're going to change their culture and and it's just a period of adjustment i think we can all just mm -hmm. breathe through it more a little bit yeah because no. we all are very adaptable yeah it's an escape right i mean that's that's what that's why people would go to plays and you know before there was film and stuff like that it's an escape they want to escape their own life right and sometimes they go to escape their own life and actually see their own life maybe get a different perspective on what, what's going on with them. So, right. So I think, you know, that's, I think what we do as artists and as, as people who are creative, mm -hmm. right? And that's what we get a kick out of doing. We, I mean, that's what we love to do. We get yeah. a kick out of doing that. Yeah. Right? And so. And was, the most important thing is good to sit down and talk about these things so there are no <laughs> misunderstandings, right? And, and I was right. going to say, you were asking about the two guys off Cutlets. I just want to say off Michael Cutlets. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're so, like, um, blessed to, like, have him. He was... He's the most like down to earth, like coolest guy. He came on. I had met him because he was directing an episode of a net show. Right. Walking Dead, and we were doing a table read at the house. We were in Virginia, and he just showed up to the house, and we started talking. And then Annette actually said it. He was like, "Hey, you should cast Mike," because we had just finished writing the script, Joe and I. And he was like, "You should cast him." And we were like, "So I got on the phone with Joe. He's like, yeah, he's awesome.' So I was like, "All right, let's we'll see if you want." And we sent it to him, and he was just like, "This is awesome. I love this. Let's get on the phone." And he was just like. Was so, he, he's, he's awesome anyway, so I wanted to say that him and Tim Well, were he's like, obviously awesome. He got, he got you yeah. into High West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and here we are, yeah. full circle. Yeah. Um, I want to, um, we'll talk, uh, everyone real quick, we'll do a little, uh, a little uh, thing here. Everyone go check out this movie. I'm not uh, messing around. This is a great movie. I'm not just doing this because they're here. This is a great movie, and it's coming out November 11th in theaters everywhere. Go check a local listing. I know that that seems weird to say because no one checks a local <laughs> listing anymore. <laughs> so go to like Google and find your local movie theater. That's the place that shows movies um, outside of streaming. And uh, go down there, buy a ticket, watch this movie. Go see it in the theaters because it's a, it's a really incredible movie. I think me and Joe talked about this the other night um, about the idea of 
seeing this movie in theaters without you know the distractions of your phones and everything like that i know that's crazy people but uh go see it without the distractions and really uh uh, uh empathize and, and become part of this art that these guys have created because it's it's worth it